Hello everyone. Welcome back for our ortho class again. So, hope you all are doing good and well. You are all reading something, I guess. You have to. We have no other go. So, today we are going on with something very important, something very interesting as well for your clinical aspect. If you are uh, practicing it properly and if you are trying to listen and understand these things properly, it will definitely going to help you in your clinics, right? So today, the topic which we are going to learn is nothing other than myofunctional appliances. So today I'll be introducing you what myofunctional appliances are and let's see what myofunctional appliances does to, a, to our oral cavity, right? Let's go. Let's have a good look onto it. So before going to that, I would like to ask what is orthodontics? So what is really this orthodontics is? Can anyone say, think what an orthodontics will be? So let's imagine a situation, right? Let's imagine a situation where somebody, some one layman is coming and asking you, some of your friends from uh, plus two or some of them who's doing randomly engineering who have no idea what an orthodontics is and they are coming and asking to you, what is orthodontics? What will be our answer? Yeah. So I would say, yeah, this is a branch or this is an entire uh, another field of dentistry where we align some tooth so that somebody will get beautiful smile. Yeah. We will get beautiful smile. Okay. Someone will be um, able to uh, chew properly, masticate properly. They can eat properly. Yeah. We are correcting the occlusion. So literally, thing is we have to have a definition for this so orthodontics includes the study of growth and development of jaws and face particularly and the body generally as influencing the position of the teeth the study of action and reaction of the internal and the external influences on the development and prevention and correction of arrested and perverted development so this is a the definition which was given by the British Society of Orthodontics, Orthodontists. So you may think this is a bit difficult to learn, but I say nothing to worry. Don't look at the Zuzus there. Uh, they are simply laughing. I know this is what your mind is telling to you to laugh like this, like this, but no matter. It's very simple. So let's split this complete entire definition into some various, various kuti kuti parts. Okay. So let's first take the entire first segment. Orthodontics includes means orthodontics is included the study of growth and development which we already know we are looking into the growth and development of the entire body and how the somebody matures how somebody is getting developed all those areas we are covering so this is includes the study of growth and development of the jaws and face particularly we are looking into the jaws and face particularly but we are not leaving the body entirely that means we are looking at the jaws and face particularly and the body generally as influencing the position of the teeth right so this is includes the study of development growth and development of the jaws and face particularly and body generally as influencing the position of the teeth okay and the study of action and reaction of the internal and external now we are looking at the etiology looking at the cause right so it is the study of action and reaction of internal and external influences on the development and prevention and correction of the arrested and perverted development so now we are telling the etiology so with that etiology we are going for the correction of all the malocclusions now let's combine everything and look together okay let's read with me everybody you do, do read with me so orthodontics includes the study of growth and development of the jaws and face particularly and body generally as influencing the position of the teeth the study of action and reaction of the internal and external influences on the development and prevention and correction of the arrested and perverted development that's all right so i guess it is simple now what are the aims of orthodontics? We should have some aim when we are treating a patient. So what are our aims? So it is coined by Jackson's, which is also called as a Jackson's triad. So first one, we have the functional efficiency. The function should be good, should have a proper occlusion, should have a proper uh, mastication. 
should have a structural balance. All the uh, things, the inside and the outside, the oral cavity should have a balance. So when I say the inside and outside the oral cavity, inside we have tongue and outside we have the buccal seat. So those should be have a balance. If that balance is not there, you know what will happen, right? If you move your tongue a little bit in an unwanted manner, sometimes you might lose our few teeth. So it should have a balance. So that structural balance should be there and aesthetically should be pleasing. So after the treatment, it is not just the aesthetics that we are concerned. We have to look at the structure, how the inside and outside uh, muscles are, uh, are they in a balance, are they, in an, uh, are they going well, that have to check and also the function should be normal. L just imagine what if you are giving a beautiful smile, next day the patient is coming with a snoring. The night the husband can't sleep because the wife is snoring. No, that is not good, right? The function should be normal there. How much ever beauty the patient have, if it disturbs the sleep, that's it. The functional efficiency is gone. Husband itself will slap and some of the teeth will come out and they may not be able to chew properly. So that functional efficiency should be there. Structural balance should be there and aesthetic harmony should be there. The same goes for husbands as well. So next one. What are the different branches we have? So right now I'm going through the introductory segment so that we all know what the appliances entirely are. So what are the different branches? We have preventive orthodontics, we have interceptive orthodontics, we have corrective orthodontics and we have surgical orthodontics. So what are all these? So what does the preventive orthodontics does? So everywhere we know the prevention is always better than cure, right? You have something abnormal, before that abnormality comes, if you can prevent it, that is always good. That is always good. So always think prevention is always better than cure. So if you can prevent something, whatever, however ways you can prevent a malocclusion from happening, so that comes under, all those treatment modalities comes under preventive orthodontics. Now interceptive orthodontics. Let's say you started running from here. You are the malocclusion. You started running from here. The end point is 10 kilometers away. Your finishing point is 10 kilometers away. So you reach that 10th kilometer, you are a complete malocclusion. Right now, you are just the beginning. Okay. So before you start, if I'm holding you there, that comes under preventive orthodontics. You go two kilometers, I come chasing you, stop you there, go, go behind, go behind, come back to the finishing starting line. That is interceptive orthodontics. Already the onset of the malocclusion have started, you are uh, intercepting it in between, that becomes an interceptive orthodontics. Third one, obviously corrective orthodontics, you have raised the uh, malocclusion, you have become a completely grown malocclusion, you have uh, raised the finishing line, now I have to take some stick and go back, go back, come to the starting point. Now that is corrective orthodontics. If it is out of hand, no other go, you have to go for a surgical orthodontics. So we have preventive orthodontics, we have interceptive orthodontics, we have corrective orthodontics and we have surgical orthodontics. So wherever entirely, so you think of an, uh, a complete orthodontics, you think everywhere in orthodontics, the basic, basic thing of everything here happening is the force. You want to move something, you have to apply force. No matter what, whatever you do, you want to move the tooth, you want to move wherever, whichever position you want to move a tooth, you have to apply force. Hope that is clear. No doubt in that. You have to move a tooth, you have to apply force. So what is going to apply the force here? So what will produce an active tooth movement? Who is going to apply the force? Who is going to push the teeth? So the thing, the thing that produces an active tooth movement are called as appliances. So the thing that produces an active movement are called as appliances. So let's move that thing thing away. Let's move a device. Let's bring a device in. The device that which produces an active tooth movement are called as the appliances. So the device which produces an active tooth movement are called as appliances. So what are appliances? So what are appliances? So appliances can transmit force from transmit force for an active tooth movement to happen. You can transmit force. You activate a label bow. I hope everybody knows what a label bow is. 
you compress a label bow, it delivers a force onto the tooth. It pushes the tooth. So that is the thing with the appliance. So we have a small classification there. You know, basically, we have an appliances which can be broadly divided into two main headings. One is mechanical and the other one is myofunctional. So the appliance is broadly classified as mechanical and myofunctional. Right? We have mechanical devices and we have myofunctional appliances. So there is a big difference there. Now we'll come to that. So what are the mechanical appliances does? Mechanical appliances simply apply force. Yeah, that simply apply force. So you apply force the tooth moves. You would insert a mechanical device there, that will apply force, that will move the tooth. So here, mechanical appliances deliver force directly onto the tooth, causing the tooth to move. No other changes, nothing, no skeletal changes, no soft tissue changes, nothing. Mm, okay, so this moves, pushes directly onto the tooth, and the tooth moves, okay. So, and the other one is myofunctional appliances. Again, we have fixed and removable. They are also mechanical, also fixed and removable. Fixed in mechanical like this, we have uh, dental braces, which are placed over the tooth, and you have all the stainless steel wire passing over that. And the removable ones are the a type of, looks like a plastic voila. It is made of acrylic. We call it as a Hawley's appliance, Hawley's appliance, not Hawley's, sorry. Hawley's appliance. And we have uh, appliances with Z spring. We have shorts appliance. We have so many appliances there. So those appliances are, which can be removed by the patient, can be kept inside the pocket by the patient, but these fixed appliances cannot be removed by, by the patient. It is, they are stick inside the oral cavity. So myofunctional appliances are those appliances which can produce some sort of myofunctional, sort of myofunctional voila changes. Myo means muscles. So these appliances can produce some changes on the muscles leading to the correction of the occlusion. So let's come into that. So before that, what are appliances, orthodontic appliances again? So by definition, orthodontic appliances are the devices by means of which mild pressure may be applied to the tooth or a group of teeth and their supporting structures so as to bring about necessary changes within the bone which will allow tooth movement. So, sorry, orthodontic appliances are the devices by means of which mild pressure may be applied to the tooth or a group of teeth and their supporting structures, supporting structures here means the periodontal ligaments and the alveolar bones, all those things, so that has to bring about necessary changes within the bone which will allow tooth movement. So, let's come to myofunctional appliances, right? Let's come to myofunctional appliances. So this myofunctional appliances, you should have a, the name itself suggests that these appliances have something to do with the muscles, right? The other mechanical devices, which purely produces force for an active tooth movement, but myofunctional appliances is a bit different. It has something to do with the muscles. So what are myofunctional appliances? So by definition, myofunctional appliances are the loose fitting or passive appliances that harness the natural force of the orofacial musculature which are transmitted to the teeth and alveolar bone through the medium of the appliance. So they harness the natural force of these all these oral and facial musculature. They harness the force from them and they absorb this force and that force is delivered onto the dentition so that some sort of movement is happening. So these are not these appliances, these are not an appliances which creates its own force. Literally, it just uh, like take it from there, give it to them. Take it from there and give it to them. The other one is like give they, they in themselves will push. This one is like they will just harness the force from the musculature and they will just deliver it onto the dentition. They will harness from the musculature and deliver it onto the dentition. So myofunctional appliances are those loose fitting or passive appliances that harness the natural force of the orofacial musculature which are transmitted to the teeth and the alveolar bone through the medium of the appliance, right? I guess the definition is very clear there. It is producing, it is harnessing all the natural force from this extra oral and intra oral, all these musculatures, whatever is there around the oral cavity. They will absorb them. They will deliver it onto the dentition. They will uh, harness and transmit it to the teeth and the alveolar bone through the medium of the appliance. So they can bring about few changes. So what are they? Let's come to that. 
so an increase or decrease in jaw size that is one thing that can they can do they can clearly increase or decrease the jaw size they can change in the spatial relationships of the jaw they can bring a class 1 into a class 2 sorry class 2 to a class 1 even though if you go it little bit further it may end up in a class 3 right from class 2 to class 1 they can bring so they will change the spatial relationships of the jaws direction of the growth pattern gets changes a patient who may be having a uh, horizontal growth pattern you give a myofunctional appliance to them entirely it is going into a vertical growth pattern so the direction of the growth uh, pattern changes growth uh, of the jaws changes acceleration of desirable growth can be done you want the uh, maxilla to grow further you can do it like that you want the mandible to grow further you can accelerate the growth so desirable acceleration of growth can be achieved so these are the things that a myofunctional appliance can do inside the oral cavity so let, let let's come let's have a brief history on that so from who introduced it so it is said that the norman kingsley in 1879 you just imagine which year how long it is in 1879 that particular time from that particular time on which we are using a myofunctional appliance he used a bite jumping appliance you can imagine bite jumping means he is jumping the bite he is jumping the bite bite is our mandible he is pushing the mandible forward so he device he uh, created a device which can push the mandible forward which is called as a bite jumping device in early 1990 1900s a parallel development began on in US so you can uh, see 1900 uh, means there is a time where the world war is happening so in world war during that time this Europeans were much busy making all those uh, what was it tanks and all the military equipments mm -hmm. so you can see there was one point where Mm, the Hitler and the Mussolini, all those, uh, they were comment, their, their comments was like to grab all the steels, grab all the steels because they want to pre make bullets. So they were uh, tell, giving orders like the medical uh, segment should not use steel items. The medical segment should not use steel items. So the medical segment like uh, blades, BP blades, all those, those are comes under a special category they may, may make. But dentistry, as you know, it is not that a emergencies uh, situation so they were clearly telling that the industry should not use any steel items so european people or the european person the european dentists are the one who clearly worked with acrylic and they are the one who introduced or the importance of the myofunctional appliance we should be th we should thank them we should be very thankful to these european peoples right so in us during that particular time they were busy making the fixed appliance they were busy making fixed appliance but Europeans where they were not getting the steel if they, they were getting the steel they will be busy making that but they were making without uh, the steel how to reduce the cost they were thinking in that way and they were making these appliances with my acrylic to produce this my functional appliances as well as all those removal appliances that doesn't say that the US people are not making US people are also making but more work was done in European countries. So next one is the first functional jaw orthopedics to treat a malocclusion was by Perry Robinson which is called as a monoblock. He created a monoblock you insert that into the oral cavity mandible moves forward. So that is the other one is the uh, William Rogers did a study on the influence of the natural force on the functional stimulation on form. You alter the form, something happens. Normally, the mandible is positioned in the backward. You give an appliance, now the mandible is positioned all anteriorly. So he did a study whether this natural force can produce some sort of changes. When the form of the mandible from one position to the other position changes, <coughs> sorry about that, really sorry about that. I know during this situation, if I sneeze, I know what are things that happened. Please don't point any guns at me. Please, please, please. I'm begging you. So anyway, I'm very happy that nobody is here. I'm alone. So I'm, I'm also happy with that. So uh, let's come back to the topic again. So the um, William Rocks did a study on the influence of the natural force on the functional stimulation on form. So you change the form, something happens inside the oral cavity. Right? So the you change the form, 
it literally affects the function it literally affects the function so alter the form function changes alter the function form changes so those things william rocks did a study on that so in 1909 our hero vigo anderson he worked and created the thing called as activator so he worked with carl hopel to produce activator which is a very excellent device but only thing is it is a little bit bulky so that the patient's complaints is bit low on that but it's a very good appliance to correct an deficient mandible right that uh, thing is called as an activator he named it as an activator because you insert that uh, appliance into the oral cavity there are some sort of changes is happening it activates some of the muscles inside and outside the oral cavity so while this activation is happening some changes are happening so due to it, it activating mainly the lateral pterygoid muscle he named it as an activator so emil herbst he introduced herbst appliance in 1905 it's a fixed functional appliance herbst appliance is a fixed functional appliance and uh balter he william balter he introduced uh, bionator and hope you all know who rolf frankl is he is the one who introduced and frankl's appliance at least you might have heard the frankl's appliance it's a bit complicated appliance though it is a very good appliance bit complicated we'll come on to that okay so now into the theory theory part so when we are thinking wherever we go we have this particular thing i know classification if we have grown up from 10th standard maybe with the classification wherever you go this thing follows here also we have one classification uh, though it is a big it is very easy to learn let's come into it so just imagine this bptt mnm bptt mnm just grasp that you think of a maya functional appliance you just think bptt mnm bptt mnm blood pressure table tennis mnm mnm you just create whatever you want so b stands for a basic p stands for profit t stands for tom graber and another t stands for transmission of force m and m myotonic and myodynamic it's very simple b for basics p for profit t for tom graber another team for uh, transmission of force m and m for myotonic and myodynamic let's see what all those are so basic classification wherever in orthodontics you go you can see this classification a basic classification you have something which can be removed removable appliance there are something which is fixed fixed appliance something that is can be removed but it stays fixed is semi fixed appliance we have removable appliance we have fixed appliance we have both combination of both semi fixed appliance so that is a basic classification then we have a classification which was given by william prophet so we have tooth bone uh, passive appliances the name itself says it is a passive appliance tooth bone active appliance we have and tissue bone appliance we have so tooth bone passive appliances are those appliances which delivers and transmits force on to the dentition but that appliance itself does not produce any force right you put a uh, an activator let's think of an activator you put this activator into the oral cavity the only thing is this is a bit bulky appliance okay it itself doesn't have any label bows or don't think of any, it's just a bulky one big block you just in create uh, put it inside the oral cavity mandible comes forward mandible comes forward it is because the patient cannot push back the mandible that's it neither this appliance is creating any force nor it is delivering any force it is not creating it's not delivering force anywhere only thing is patient is not able to move the mandible backward because this appliance is bulky it just prevents it that's it it itself is not producing any force there is no active forces are it only uh, harness transmit that's it right so that is a tooth bone passive appliance we have a tooth bone active appliance just imagine you are activating the label bow on the activator previously you have a activator with label bow but you are not activating the label bow here you just activate the label bow now that becomes a tooth bone active appliance so even though a activator's label bow cannot be activated just think of an uh, twin block appliance with uh, jack screw in it give a twin block appliance with jack screw in it you activate the jack screw it expands now that is producing a force now that becomes a tooth bone active appliance 
we have tissue bone appliance which neither produces nor it delivers it is just passive tissue bone it is there something near to the tissues inside the oral cavity something to do with the tongue something to do with the uh, all these buccal cheeks and mucosa it itself doesn't have any force it itself doesn't produce any force neither it is attached to the tooth okay so we, according to profit we have tooth bone passive tooth bone active and tissue bone so next one it is tom graber so tom graber have classified it into three categories we have group a group b and group c we have group a we have group a we have group b and we have group c group a b and c so group a is something that is teeth supported group b is something that is teeth or and tissue supported not or it is and it's not or it is and my bad so it is tooth and tissue supported c is purely tissue supported okay group a is teeth supported group b is teeth and tissue supported group c is tissue bone it's purely tissue bone it have nothing to do on the teeth so we have tom grabers two group a group b and group c group a is tooth bone group b is tooth and tissue bone not or my bad tooth and tissue bone and group c is tissue bone purely tissue bone so next one is according to the transmission of force so we have a group 1 appliance we have group 2 appliance also we have group 3 appliance so group 1 appliances are those appliances which uh take all the force from the directly from the muscles and it is directed towards the tooth we take all the muscles from the uh, forces from the muscles and it is delivered onto the tooth so that is a group 1 appliance group 2 appliances are those appliances which just repositions the mandible repositions the mandible when the mandible is brought forward mandible always have a tendency to move backward right you push the mandible forward the mandible will have a tendency to move backward so group 2 appliances are those appliances which just push the mandible anteriorly so when the mandible tries to go backward it pushes the appliance so that force when the mandible starts pushing the appliance backward it generates a force right so he harness that force and delivers onto the tooth or wherever it requires example activator and bayonet okay hope you all got it no let's see that once again group 1 directly from muscles take it from muscles deliver it onto the tooth okay from muscles deliver it onto the tooth group b appliances push the mandible forward what happens to the mandible now mandible tries to go back so when the mandible tries to go back it pushes the appliance so when it pushes the appliance a force is getting generated that force will be used for all those things there all the biomechanical all the biochemical changes to happen inside the oral cavity for example activator and bayonet group 3 appliances are those appliances which also produces or which also repositions the mandible anteriorly but they won't di act directly they are like spies they won't come into action they won't come into the scene properly they will be just working in the uh, mucogingival region they will be working somewhere on the what to say the entire area of operation will be on the vestibule they are like spies they won't come directly contacting the tooth okay so those are the group 3 appliances so group 3 appliances are those appliances which repositions the mandible but their entire area of operation will be on the vestibule so we have a group 1 appliances group 2 appliances and group 3 appliances group uh, group 1 appliances takes force from the muscles applies directly onto the tooth for example we have a lip bumper lip bumper when you, when you put inside a lip bumper the lower lips is pushed outward so lower lip pushes the lip bumper backward it generates a force it is used for distalization of the molar it can be used for the distalization of a molar so that comes under a group 1 uh, appliances group 2 appliances are those appliances which repositions the mandible so when the mandible is repositioned mandible tends to go back to its previous position it pushes the appliance along with it that generates a force and that uh, force is utilized for all the works there for example bayonetter and activator and group 3 appliances are those appliances which also repositions the mandible only thing their area of working is not directly on the tooth they will be working in the vestibules on the both the sides in the vestibules right so that is with the force 
transmission of force. Now we have an appliances which is purely based on the myotonic and myodynamic appliances. So tonic means tonicity, dynamic means movement or activity, right? Tonic means tonicity, thickness, mass, dynamic means movement, the activities of the muscles, right? So myotonic appliances are those appliances purely works on the muscle tone, mass of the tone. When myodynamic appliances are those appliances which purely functions or works on the uh, movement of the muscles. You do some uh, movement of the muscles, there some movement is happening, that movement will produce some kinetic force, that force is grabbed from there and delivered it onto the tooth. So that is the myotonic and myodynamic appliances, oh, sorry, uh, for the classification. So with that, the classification part is over. So we have, let's recap. We have myotonic and myodynamic, we have transmission of force, we have a classification by Tom Graeber and we have a classification of profit. So profit says group A, group B and group C. Tom uh, Graeber says, sorry, I'm confusing, right? Profit says tooth bone passive, tissue tooth bone active and tissue bone. Profit says tooth bone passive, tooth bone active tissue bone appliances. Tom Grabber says group A, group B, group C, group A is tooth supported, group B is tooth and tissue supported, tooth and tissue supported. I'm repeating it again. Don't get confused with this little mistake there. It is tooth and tissue supported and group C is purely tissue supported. Then we have uh, by the four transmission of force, group one appliances, group two appliances and group three appliances. And we have something with the muscle mass and muscle movement we have myotonic and myodynamic okay now let's come into the principle treatment principle so there are two basic treatment principles what we have to think one is force application and the other one is force elimination you harness all the force from everywhere you apply it onto the tooth push or pull whatever that comes under force application some unwanted forces are coming, you just keep it away, okay, leave, leave some space there, okay, don't disturb our tooth here. So that becomes force elimination. Let's see a video that will give you a clear idea. So here is an appliance, which is a twin block appliance here. So when that, 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 that thing is what I say that applies a force there, okay, let's see it clearly, closely, okay. So you have to insert that upside and insert the oral cavity. Now you can see the patient is cannot glide backward. They have to slide it anteriorly because that's slanting. So here, this one, you turn it each time it expands the arch. So for a constricted arch with a class 2, you can activate it so that the arch will get expanded. Also, mandible will not be allowed to fall back because of that particular slanting over there right so whenever the patient bites whenever a person bites when there is a twin block inside the oral cavity it comes contact and it slides anteriorly it comes in contact like this and it slides anteriorly that is how a twin block works so we are talking about the force application there the force is applied in this particular video you can see the shorts appliance like our jack screw so you each and every time you activate that appliance that pushes the tooth away. Now this particular tooth block becomes an appliance which is applying force. Okay. So here he is applying force. Now let's see how what a force elimination is. So force elimination. Let's see. You always let, let, you just you just put your face like this. Mm. So you can see all two side buckles is are pushing pushing our uh, arch so that instead of a wide arch we are getting a constricted arch instead of wide arch we are getting a constricted arch so what our triangle appliance does is so what our triangle appliance does is hmm, so you put this triangle's appliance inside the oral cavity it the buckle shields and the lip pads what that arrow mark indicates the lip pads it just pushes the lips away so now an unwanted force from the buckle side the buckle pads you can see on these two sides those buckle pads will pushes the buckle 
proximator muscles and these buccal side muscles or buccal cheeks and also the lip pads here lip pads on the anterior side that pushes our anteriorly so the mandible is allowing to grow further let's see that once again right okay so here it is so this arrow is indicating that it is pushing the lips away so that mandible can easily grow into that particular space right so this is elimination of the force so treatment principle let's think it is one is force application and the other one is force elimination so what is force application so compressive stress and strain act on the structures involved and results in a primary alteration in form and secondary in function so here you in keep insert an uh, twin block inside the oral cavity the form is getting changed primarily mandible has to be positioned anteriorly so the form is getting changed so the function is getting changed in force elimination elimination of the abnormal restrictive environmental influences on the dentition thereby allowing optimal development so we have seen in the previous video the buccal seeds buccal uh, muscles are pushed away the labial muscles are pushed away so when the labial muscles are pushed and the, when the buccal muscles are pushed the mandible and the maxilla whichever bone they are free to move right just imagine a situation where you are sitting right in the between here one big fat fellow is there here one big fat fellow is there you are not able to move right you are not able to move so you just push them aside so you are able to sit properly so the same thing so you are just pushing all the unwanted forces there simple right so thus there you are altering the function that function means that compressive force from the buccinator that is a function so that function you are pushing it away with a secondary change in the form now the mandible is moving anteriorly and the form changes so with force application primarily you are altering the form secondary function with force elimination primarily you are uh, uh, changing the function so the form is getting changed so that is with the force application and force elimination which is our treatment principle now there are functional appliances i mean the majority of the functional appliances have a combination of both it just pushes away the unwanted force delivers an active force right so that is how it works so we have force elimination and we have force transmission that's interesting let's see some action there so the action of functional appliance action of functional appliance so how does it act what happens when you are what happens when you insert an uh, myofunctional appliance in turn the oral cavity just pushes the mandible anteriorly let's see so when you put a myofunctional appliance inside the oral cavity not just the dentition that is getting affected there right so in an oral cavity it is surrounded by the muscle muscles so there are muscle clear changes hmm? the skeletal system the mandible and the maxilla the skeletal system is having some changes so there we have the orthopedic changes there the orthopedic changes and again it's not just muscles and the skeletal system tooth is the one acts as an handle there it harness all the force it is transmitting onto the tooth directly from the tooth only the skeletal system is getting the force so directly a force is happening onto the tooth so something has a, has to happen onto the alveolar tissues and the dentition so we have muscular changes we have orthopedic changes and we have dento alveolar changes so three things so what have what are all the muscular changes we can see so what are all the muscular changes we can see just imagine so you are uh, pushing away the uh, muscles and uh, you are asking the patient to always keep the mouth closed like this full time so all this uh, tonicity increases if it is an hypotonic muscles it becomes an hypo becomes an hyper if it is an hypertonic you are doing some muscle exercise its rigidity will get increases so the muscular changes will happen 
orthopedically you can see from a class 1 entire class 2 molar relationships or entire class 2 skeletal relationship you are pushing the mandible anteriorly that means there are skeletal changes that is happening and also there is something called as a headgear effect when you typically face uh, placing a uh, twin block as well as our activator when an activator is placed it pushes the maxilla backward and it pulls out the pushes the maxilla pulls the maxilla backward sorry i'm confusing with all the words there it pushes the maxilla backward pushes the mandible forward simple terms it pushes the maxilla backward maxilla backward pushes the mandible forward how you just imagine you are a rope is tied and you are just trying to grab the rope and you are just trying to push it up what happens to the rope rope have a tendency to come down you have a tendency to go up right something is here you are trying it to pull it out right i just grab it and i try to pull you pulling it here you are pushing your body up right so when you insert this mandible is positioned anteriorly so mandible tends to push the uplines backward so that backward force is delivered onto the maxilla so maxilla shows a tendency to move backward so those things happens on the orthopedic changes so what happens to the dentin alveolar segment there hmm? so the dentin alveolar segment shows a change that maxillary dentition shows a changes like it has to go backward mandibular dentition shows the changes that it is flaring out so maxillary incisors will retrocline mandibular incisors will procline got it maxillary incisors will retrocline because on the maxilla the entire device shows a distal driving force so maxilla will move backward mandible shows a mesial driving force so that mandible tends to have an proclined incisors got it and also uh, sort of changes maxillary dentition moves backward mandibular dentition moves forward so those are the dento alveolar changes will have that is happening so the important thing here is the case selection criteria so what are all the case selection criteria we have few cases it is not that you can go and give uh, this myofunctional appliances to everyone okay you take it free you are how many how old are you 50 years take it free no you can't do that 50 year old man literally grown up man you can't do myofunctional won't work then so for what age what age what do you think who is growing man with 50 years no who is growing kids good kids are the one who is growing kids means not every kid you can't go and give this way oh but bear a small kid like a toddler of one year old or give this my function no it should be on a growing patient yeah it should be an adolescent patient yeah has to be an age group between uh, let's say 9 to 13 years that is the age which we prefer so the patient should be a growing age in uh, early mixed dentition period is what the ideal age what we consider early mixed dentition period uh, i would say yeah 9 9 years transmission apnea when those are the age group that we prefer to give a myofunctional appliances because patient should be having a growth potential we are giving this myofunctional appliance so that patient can have an uh, increased growth so if that increased growth has to happen the growth potential should be there then only it will grow and completely uh, grown patient there is no growth potential what is the use of giving a myofunctional appliance no there is no use right so the age of the patient you have can give only in growing uh, patient adolescent patient prepubertal growth period is what we suggest prepubertal growth spurt is what we suggest early mixed dentition period you give good result late mixed dentition also you can give you can give fixed functional appliances right you can give fixed functional appliances social considerations yeah in textbook it is given that a patient who is uh, what was it who is uh, mm, uh social consideration a patient who is uh, living in an uh, boarding and all uh, you give this appliance it is very easy for him because these appliances doesn't require much of activations and all you insert it it works hmm? patient can come and uh, visit uh, once or twice in two months that will do so those are the social considerations so dental consideration again there should not be any crowding if a crowding is there you have to correct the crowding first then advance the mandible else what happens you put the mandible in a forward position with crowding 
then you will have to go for some other treatments. So instead, first you correct the crowding, then advance the mandible. That is the ideal thing. You have a mandibular incisors which are already proclined. You can't go for a myofunctional appliance because the in the contraindication, the net effect of the myofunctional appliance is that it will again flare out the mandibular incisors. You have a retroclined maxillary incisors. No, it's, no, again, you can't, right? Already because the maxillary incisors, if it is reclined, retroclined, myofunctional appliance shows an uh, ability, so it shows something uh, like it will further retrocline the maxillary incisors. So for uh, maxillary incisors which are retroclined, you can't do. So dental consideration, crowding, you can't do. Proclined lower incisors, you can't do. Retroclined upper incisors, you can't do, right? So these are the things to consider. Skeletal consideration, again, for a class three patient, obviously you can go for a class three patient. You can go for a class three patient, but majority of the myofunctional appliances works for a class two patient. So patient should have a large overjet. Patient should have a large overjet, class two uh, retrognathic mandible, deficient mandible, so there are situations where the maxilla is prognathic and it shows something like, yeah, it looks like a deficient mandible. Now you take a cef, you draw, trace it, you will come into a conclusion that the patient is not having a maxillary problem. Patient is entirely having a mandibular problem. So social considerations again, skeletal considerations, sorry, skeletal considerations should be a class two dentition, should be a problem on the mandible. Again, growth pattern should be in a growing phase. Cephalometry criteria, there are certain things. So uh, today I'll not be talking about cephalometry criteria. I'll take another session for that. It needs a little bit of explanations. Since this video might go lengthier, I have just cut down that. So I'll take that in and my next video will be on that. Or maybe next to next. Next to consider is the visual treatment objective. So what is a visual treatment objective? Can you guess anything from the photo? From there on this side, picture? Can you guess anything there? No? Yes? Yeah? You think those are two patients? No, those are not two patients. That is a single patient. Visual treatment objective means how can you come into a conclusion in the clinics that the patient is ideally suitable for a functional therapy? How? Can you? No. Clinically, the patient is coming. Okay, we have to uh, take a X-ray. We have to take a lateral cephalogram. Then only we can come into a conclusion whether your uh, kid is having a maxillary prognathism or a mandibular prognathism. No, you can give a small, clear, small idea to the patient by just simply doing this visual treatment objective. You just ask the patient to place the mandible forward. Just ask the patient to place the mandible forward like this. Just ask the patient to place the mandible forward. If the profile improves, it is a positive with you. Good. You ask the patient to position the mandible forward. If the profile improves, it is a positive with you. If the profile is worsening, it is a negative with you completely. No, no, no. It is a negative with you. If, let's say, a patient is having a 10 millimeter of overjet, 10 millimeter, right? 10 millimeter. You come, 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 fifth millimeter. Wow, very good. Patient looks very pleasing. You further come, oh, no, 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 it is going bad. That means at half segment, it is a good. And then it is no, that means it is a halfway positive. That means if it is a positive VTO, listen to me very carefully. Don't confuse this. Positive VTO means, positive VTO means patient is having a deficient mandible, right? Positive VTO, positive VTO means patient is having a deficient mandible. Negative VTO means patient is having a prognathic maxilla, okay? Negative VTO means patient is having a prognathic maxilla. If it is halfway positive, Another half negative means patient is having a combination of prognathic maxilla and retrognathic mandible. It is not necessary always the patient should have a problem only on one skeletal jaw. 
patient can have a problem on both maxilla as well as on the mandible. So halfway positive means halfway positive means patient is having a retroposition mandible, mandible, also prognathic maxilla. So VTO positive, retrognathic mandible, VTO negative, prognathic mandible, halfway positive combination of maxillary prognathism and mandibular retrognathism. I hope that is clear. So what are all the advantages? We are coming into the final segments. So what are all the advantages? Guess advantages will be positive guess. Obviously it eliminates muscle functions and aid in normal development. Main function, main advantage. Early age treatment, yeah. Imagine a child is going to the college getting teased by the fellow members, fellow friends. So early age, early adolescent, maybe 8th standard, 9th standard, you can give a myofunctional appliance, it corrects. Psychological disturbances can be avoided. Chair side time is very less. Yeah, take an impression, send it to the lab. They make all these twin block myofunctional appliances. So the patient's chair side work is very low. And frequency of the patient visit can be reduced. Yeah, obviously it is reduced. Oral hygiene maintenance, patient can remove the appliance, clearly brushes. So oral hygiene maintenance, patient acceptance and the duration of the time is reduced per day. You don't have to wear is 24 into 7. So how long do we advise the patient to wear? Yeah, how long? Four hours initially. Yeah, four hours initially, first one week, just to adjust, just to adapt with these appliance. Then we ask the patient to wear it overnight. Then we will advise the patient to go for 12 to 14 hours per day. Yeah, but, but myofunctional appliance, if the patient can wear it full time, it's always good. It's always good. Yeah, if the patient can wear it 24 hours, it's always good. But if it is an early mixed dentition period, you don't have to uh, make the patient wear it all the time. I know it is very difficult. We all know it is very difficult. So four hours, five hours, according to the age group, you can reduce the timing. Early adolescent patient means the patient is having a large potential period of growth. So you can gradually, gradually you can increase, no issues. Unless the patient is on a tight schedule. Yeah, you don't have much time. On a uh, late mixed dentition period, the growth is might stop or any time. So you can advise for a 24 hours time, okay? So we have eliminates the muscle functions and aid in uh, normal development, early age treatment, psychological disturbance can be avoided, chair side uh, time is reduced, frequency of the patient visit is very much reduced, oral hygiene maintenance will be pakka, patient acceptance as the duration and time wear is reduced per day. So those are the advantages, but it also have limitations. It have its own limitations. First and foremost will be the age. You cannot use in adult patients. That's what you cannot use in adult patient. It's have its own limitations there. You cannot use in an adult patient. Restriction in individual tooth movement. Yeah, obviously. If the patient's tooth is rotated, you cannot derotate. If the patient's tooth is much proclined with spacing, you cannot bring it back. No, you can't do that. So your individual tooth movement is not possible. Minor irregularities, pre-orthodontic corrections may be required. That's what we told. No? Crowding patients, it is strictly contraindicated. That's what. In minor irregularities, a little bit of crowding is there. You may require a pre-functional therapy. And patient cooperation is very important. Patient cooperation is very important. You give this appliance, I have seen. Uh, you give this activator appliance, which is very bulky. Patient keeps it very happily from the clinic. He goes home, two days he wears, and then he puts like, Mama, I can't wear this. It's very bulky. Yeah. He puts that in the pocket. He might even play cricket with that. Activator is something like that. He will see it like a very bulky. It's like a ball. Yeah. So patient cooperation is very important. You give a twin block appliance. Patient will take, yeah, see, yeah, see. He puts in the pocket. It doesn't know. It's not going to work. It has to be there inside the oral cavity. So patient compliance is very important. Patient cooperation is very important. Post-functional correction may be required in most of the cases. You cannot completely say that myofunctional appliances will uh, correct the malocclusions. Yeah, post-functional uh, fixed and appliance therapy is required. So for today, I guess we have seen all these topics. 
is all these topics we have gone through all these uh, headings definition yeah we have seen the definition why are functional appliances are those appliances which harness the natural force and transmit it over to the dentition and the alveolar bone through the medium of the appliance we have seen a beautiful definition there harness deliver onto the tooth and alveolar tissue and uh, sorry alveolar bone through the medium of the appliance we have seen an introduction we have seen go through the history part we have classified yeah we have a classification by profit we have a classification by tom graber we have a classification that uh, tom graber then t p t t i forgot p t t m and m yeah p t t m and m so uh, p stands for profit t stands for tom graber another t for uh, transmission of uh, forces and m and m for muscle mass and muscle uh, muscle uh, tonicity and muscle dynamic yeah p t t m and m yeah classification then treatment principles yeah two principles we have we have either force application you push force applications or force elimination two treatment principles action of force we have you know oral cavity is not just the teeth and the tongue oral cavity is a collaboration of all the muscles inside and muscles outside and all those alveolar segments and all the teeth and the uh, orthopedic so we have three actions there we have actions that is happening on the musculature we have actions that is happening on the dento alveolar segment and also we have actions that is happening on the orthopedic changes case selection criteria obviously the age social considerations then what social consideration age social consideration uh, dental criteria dental consideration skeletal criteria or skeletal consideration and cephalometric criteria or cephalometric consideration so cephalometric consideration as i told i'll be taking one another lecture on that no issues no worries it's very simple unless i have to show some uh, animated uh, way you won't understand that's the reason why i'll take it entirely on another segment then we know the advantages yeah obviously and all the limitations we have seen i hope you all liked today's class yeah i also liked it the way i took it so please do read it properly you have any doubts you can always contact us if you want you can contact it through the comment section you can uh, ask all the doubts to your staffs they will always be very ready to answer you all if you have any doubts please don't forget please don't hesitate to comment in this comment section okay so until next time see you take care safe home be at home bye bye see you